Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode one of this Let's Play European of Solace 4. This is the March of the Vikings, and this is the first time we're actually going to get dug in with the uh, gameplay. We are going to be playing as Mordgard over here on the left side of India, and our objective is basically to get over here somewhere into China, establish a Viking nation over there. We also want to try and get into Indochina, Australia, and grab some territories over there if possible, and of course spread the Norse faith and the Norse culture throughout the world wherever possible. Now, there are one or two minor changes that I've made since the last episode, which was the uh, setup and the kind of description of what was going on here. So if you haven't seen that and you want to know more about the nations that you are play that we are playing with and why everything looks so bizarre, I very highly recommend that you go and check that out. But the thing that has changed is you'll remember a lot of the Norse nations were given um, the ability to explore and a free colonist. This actually turned out to be a subpar method of doing that because I worked out how to weight nations getting exploration ideas. So I could basically make it more likely that some nations got exploration and less likely that others did. Before that, there was there was still a bit of dynamic control, but not so much. Uh, basically, what is possible to do is flag people as like super aggressive colonizers, first wave colonizers, second wave colonizers, and then I've actually added a third wave colonizing. So the super aggressives are, it's Portugal in vanilla. So you're basically just designating which nation is Portugal. And for this, I've actually designated two. It's Burgundy and it is Svitjod. So Burgundy can tackle it from here in the north, seeing as they control Iceland. And then Svitjod, with their control of Spain, or southern Spain, uh, are the other Portugal, um, Portugal-like nation. And then the first wave of colonizers would be like Andalusia, it's Aquitaine, it's Austrasia, I think it's actually Genoa is another one. Again, they are ranged merchants, that's the type of thing they do. And then Norderiki falls in there somewhere, um, Italy, England, Germany, I think is another first wave actually, seeing as they control most of Scotland, they're in a pretty good position to go colonizing. The other thing I've done is there is actually a soft limit on the number of colonial overlords in the game which is eight usually i've doubled that to 16 so i'm hoping what we see is more colonial nations owned by more countries so there'll be more interplay and more interaction between those colonial nations in the americas i'm really kind of excited about that there is only one nation which i have left with the ability to explore without taking exploration and that is a guard over here now the reason for this change it's basically the experiences from what I had in Saga of the Titans, whereby even if you had more colonists and the ability to colonize like that, one, you were often stuck on range, and to get more range, you need exploration ideas. And two, if you then took exploration ideas and had three colonists active, it was freaking hard to pay for them, especially when you're one of the smaller nations, which col the uh, colonials very often are. So... I decided to leave Agagard with the colonists because you're quite close to Indonesia and that would allow you to get over there, uh, hopefully before these guys, while the others, it was just better using the uh, exploration system which is already built into the game and I just manipulated for my own ends. It also is going to mean I've like played around a little, little bit with waitings, and I had a bit of fun with that. Uh, we should also see a lot more of the underused um, idea groups coming into play. For example, Maritime, which I think is one of the most underrated idea groups in the game, uh, should start making appearances, particularly for merchant republics and other trading nations like Denmark. So anyway, I just wanted to give you that little bit of a background about the changes which have been made. It is now time to get started. Huzzah! So we are Mordgard. We have got... Let's have a look. Our development is currently 206, which is one of the higher, if we have a quick look-see at the country overviews. We can check out the income. We are in the top slot. We're not in the top three, I think. Initially we were, but a few things have changed. So we are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, which is still pretty good. And military-wise, we are not even close to the top. Our military is actually relatively small at 15,000 men. And our navy, however, is glorious. We have joint... Second most um, heavies in the game. We have joint second most light ships. Actually, Alstovik has the most. That's interesting. They have no heavies, but loads of lights. I wonder if that's modified because they're a merchant republic in the algorithms which do the uh, conversion. Possibly. I know galleys again. It must know where the inland seas are. Cool. I like that. 
So with our own light ships, we should probably send them off to go and protect trade. We are definitely going to be protecting trade in Goa, that is the area that we are in. Now, it was asked in the comments to have a quick overview of where the trade zones are, and I can do that. Actually, I just noticed I don't actually... Huh. We can't see much of the coast. See, every time that I've been doing the uh, practice or the uh, the test runs of this, I'm sure that we could see more of the coast, but I always had Terra, in Terra Incognita turned off, and now we don't. Oh, that's going to be an interesting challenge. Huh. Okay, cool. So, uh, what was I saying? We do need to protect trade. We're going to be protecting Goa. We have a coastal center of trade here in Chul. And I think that's the only one on this coastline, unless there's one actually in Goa. See, in Vanilla, I'm pretty sure that Goa would have a coastal center of trade. It doesn't. We have one down here in Cochin, which is in the Ceylon region. And then over here, Alstovic. It controls three of them. This is why Alstovic is such a powerful area. Two coastal centers of trade and one inland center of trade in a merchant republic. So, huge. Very, very strong. Kirhus and Godwari Estuary. Coastal Center of Trade, Ganges Estuary, another Ganges Estuary. Okay, so as you can see, the the number of coastal cities, coastal centers of trade, I think, has gone up, and they are definitely arranged in other places. Like, look at this little concentration around Genoa. If Genoa was able to take Montferrat, then that is one hell of a monopoly on the Genoese area. I mean, the rivers obviously haven't changed, like Provence leading to the Rhone Estuary. Oh, Rome's a coastal centre of trade. I'm pretty sure that that's not usually true. And Constantinople, coastal centre of trade, and also the Bosphorus Sound Toll. And then the really important one is up here in Denmark. The Danes control a ridiculous amount of the trade up here. I don't think I can show you that. Denmark, uh, 64. That seems low. I bet it hasn't calculated yet because we haven't unpaused. Right, so let's do the unpausing stuff. We'll go through the other stuff as we're going because we're going to have a bit of downtime, I'm sure, as uh, diplomatic offers head off and that type of thing. So we need to select our rivals. Oh, son of a bitch, Alstovic has rivaled us. I was really hoping to have them as a ally because Alstovic are really strong. They're the Merchant Republic over here. So I should probably say we are the dark blue. The kind of shiny blue is Fitter Bagaland. They are the fighty Norse. Alstovic are the tradey Norse. And then Egegard are the colonially Norse. <laughs> and then over here we have Vane Gormagard, which are the diplomats, and Nimmerland, which are the defensive isolationists. So I think we're going to have to make friends with at least some of these. I mean, Fitter Bagaland would be a pretty good one. You're very close to us. Your rivals is Sindas. I... Oh, I have to wait a day until I can turn another offer. So we're going to try and get Fritter Bagaland. They have a relatively small army, but they are the warrior group, so that their armies hit hard. Uh, we're going to try and get an alliance with them. I'm really irritated about Alstovic. Why did you have to rival me? No! You want a bunch of my land. Well, you're not going to get it. I'm actually going to throw the dice here, and I'm going to try and improve relations with them to see if they undo that. And... Nummerland could be another ally. So we can have up to four. So I think it's going to be Fretta Bagaland, Vega Gormand, Vane Gormagard, Nummerland, and then maybe one or two of the Indians if we can get that. So who are the rivals? Well, who are Alstovic's rivals? Because this might make them friendly towards us. Your rivals with Andra. Who is Andra? Andra's here. I think we're going to rival Andra. Can we rival Andra? Hopefully. We cannot. Bollocks. Um, Ratas is usually a good one because Ratas owns these territories. However, Ratas is also up here. It's, it's, it's bigger than you would expect, but it's an obvious place to expand to. Likewise with these guys, although you are a vassal of Sindas, and Sindas is big. Now, Sindas and Manas we need to be careful about because those are the two bigger uh, nations, and I have seen them cause numerable problems for the uh, Maud Guardians in the past. So... We need to be careful of those. I didn't realize you were a vassal. You have your own vassals. Praethras and Chaldus. Chaldus. And Praethras. Okay, they're tiny. Um, but we might be able to foster some problems between them. So I think Ratas is going to have to be one of my rivals. 
Uh, I can't believe you don't have any others. It's just me and Andra. Oh, thanks. Uh, probably going to have to make rivals with one of them, but we're going to wait. We're going to let time run a bit so we can see what's going on, and then we'll think about that. Introduce vision quest. What does this do? This increases prestige but reduces stability modifier. Um, yes, although prestige isn't going to be a massive problem for us. I'm still going to take it. And then spreading Norse rituals. That is a no downside increase in missionary strength, which all Norse nations get, which is rather nice. And that's also going to mean that we are immediately able to actually start converting something. So the Maldives. Although if they revolt, then that would be a problem. You know what? I think we're going to wait until we get our first idea, which is going to increase our missionary strength by a further plus two. So yeah, we're waiting. Uh, speaking of which, our uh, traditions are advisor costs, so we can hire advisors more cheaply. And actually, we have a lot of money, so we're going to have to be using that. And yearly legitimacy, because we are the rightful rulers. Undisputed. Right, so how much money do we make? We make only one ducat. That's unfortunate. Although, we have a lot of heavy ships. Which I'm going to mothball. Like, straight off. Just mothballed. We have a fort here. Is that the only fort? We may wish to build more forts. Although, do I really want to do them on the coast? Probably not. Because on the coast, they don't, they don't protect you from very much. You kind of want them inland. So they protect you from stuff trying to get past. Uh, and a deity. We do need to select a deity. Is there anyone that gives missionary strength? No. So, legitimacy and core creation cost, irrelevant. National tax and manpower is not a bad one. Land leader shock and fort defense could be good, especially as we haven't raised any leaders yet, so that would immediately apply. More national sailors and discipline it would make our armies better. And I kind of suspect that we are going to need slightly better armies. Construction cost and tech cost could also be good, because then we can start raising some buildings. Trade efficiency, how much money are we making out of trade? We control 39% of this node. Fantastic. We're actually making a lot of money from trade. So, trade efficiency wouldn't be a bad shout either. Yeah, it currently accounts for 50% of our income, roughly. Oh, and that's immediately shot up to three. So we can definitely start to afford some advisors. I think we're going to need a uh, military one at least. So we'll get the national manpower guy. Do we want to? I think we probably want to. Admin or trade? Morale of navies or national tax or stability. I think we're going to take the national tax guy. Just so we have a bit more income. And in fact, thanks to our reduction in wages, we could probably get a third. You know what? We'll do that. Monarch points are going to be important for us. We have the navigator, which means our ships are even more durable. Man, our navy's going to kick ass. Unfortunately, it's not going to be much use to us initially. Ah, uh, that hasn't answered what deity I want to go for. I think... Construction tech, or do we want military? It really depends on how aggressive our neighbours are going to be. Like, who else hates us? That's a good place to start. Gujarat, which is... Let's go into the normal screen. These guys, they're not huge. But yeah, Gujarat, Alstavik, unfortunately, Manas, and Sindh, oh great, both of them. Yeah, I think we're going to have to focus on military. So, shock... Or discipline. Discipline. We're going to go with Tyr. This only lasts for the duration of this ruler's life. And he's 69, so that's not going to be too long. Unfortunately, because he is amazing. 466, six. next guy's a 335. Three, so gutted that my actual decent heir died right right before we converted. Alright. Um, force limit. We can get another 5 units. I think that we kind of have to. We want to build up to our maximum strength. I'm going to invest fairly heavily in cavalry. So that we can get the most bang for our buck. And also buildings. Oh, we can't actually do any buildings yet. The only one we can do is forts. In which case, forget that. We'll just save the money in case we need mercenaries. Which is quite possible. Alright, so we still have another diplomat available. We could just leave him and then secure these alliances as soon as possible. I think that's probably the best option. Missions. Achieve religious unity. I would love to do that. Improve relations with Fitter Bagaland. That's going to be a very easy one to do and it's going to give us more Diplo reputation. I mean, we're about to sign an alliance with them. So, yeah, that's an easy one. Do we want to start this converting? I mean, we have transports. We have troops to get over there. We'd only do 1%, but sure, we'll start. 
Alright, let's bump this up to speed 3 and get things going. Elstavik has announced Vengi Chalius, their new rival for Tabagaland, has made an alliance with us. Marvellous. So, Vengomagard, let's make an alliance with you. Excellent. And then Namaland, we'll need to wait until a diplomat is available. I'm really annoyed about you. Vengi, where's Vengi? Oh, I'm not seeing them. Where are you? Oh, it's them! You know what? They would be a good rival. Can I please rival them? Because those are guys I can trap there with my boats. Damn it. No, I can't. Uh, Gujarat, I think I'm going to have to. They're close. They're a very likely early target. And... It's going to have to be one of the big guys. I don't know. <laughs> They as yet have no allies. I mean, an early war against Manus before they could get allies might not be a bad shout. So we're going to get an alliance with Nummelund. And then I think we're going to wait until we have a covert guy and we're going to start covert operations against Manus. And hopefully they don't get any alliances. Uh, who's the stronger of those two? Can we tell? Armies. Let's do this by population. So it's Manus and... Oh, bollocks. What were the other ones called? Sindas, of course. So let's go down to the S for Sindas. Sindas have an army of 9,000. Okay, that's not many. And then Manus... Fifteen. Okay, so Sindas is definitely the one that we want to go after. In which case, let's cancel you and start working on Sindas. Instead. Yeah. Still no allies, that's fine. Humiliate rival, CBs, cool. Royal marriage, very well. Oh, another thing I need to show you. We have a lot of royal marriage, well, not royal marriage, but um, links with other dynasties. Finland, England, Denmark, Holmgard, Bergslagen, Norway, Vestlandet, and Svitjord are all of the Viking dynasty, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Alright, so. Are there any of the nations around who don't like you? Are you arrivals with Manas? And Ratas. Oh, if I hadn't rivaled Ratas. Ratas have rivaled me, though, haven't they? I haven't rivaled them, and they haven't rivaled me. Oh, Ratas might actually be a really good ally. Oh, this is something I didn't anticipate. No, you hate me. Okay, never mind. You have rivaled us. No, I rivaled you. Never mind. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. Gujarat and Sindas. I mean, I could totally try and get an alliance with Manus. No, because they both rivaled me. Right, that's right. So I think I'm going to have to rival Sindas, because that's the one that we're going after. And we want the power projection from beating them. And of course we just want the money and the territory and the force limit, most importantly the force limit. Okay, we've improved our relations, we have a diplomatic reputation over plus one. Alstavik, come on. We're making friends now. Let's shift our army down there. We won't get a leader just yet. Um, we'll go in. Bring our troops together. Manas is threatening. Right, embargoes. Yes, of course, that is a thing. So we want to do that to Sindas. And to Gujarat, was it? Yes. Do that in five days. And to Ratas. Okay. So that should do some damage to their economies, because we control a lot of the trade here. 39%. Has that reduced my income? I think it might have, slightly. So we definitely want to keep the Berkers happy. Egegard has joined the trade league led by... Elstavik. Good. Right, so the other nation that we might want to try and buddy up to is Shura over here. This is what was the um, massive Shura Empire. The remnants thereof. I cut them up a bit. Um, most of the green area here are either vassals or Shura has claims on. So for example here, 
Permanent claim. I'm sure it has a permanent claim on this province. Can we make friends with you? Not immediately. But we could certainly try and improve relations. Let's try it. Why not? Oh, you are enemies with Gujarat and Ratas, both of whom we are too. Mutual enemies. Lots of mutual enemies. Oh, that makes me happy. Alright, let's bring our armies together. I'm going to guess supply limit out here is not going to be a huge issue. Oh, actually, it is in a few places. Uh, where's the limit there? 21, 27. Uh, 20 in Goa, so we can't grow it anymore. But at least this is a pretty strong army. Lots of cavalry, meaning that we have a massive shock damage. It is costing us a lot of money, though. Which is less good. Now, part of the problem is I cannot safely just keep my armies on low maintenance. Actually, yes, I can if I do it down here. It means that we risk losing some territory up there, but actually having them fight on our terms would be a better thing. Ratas is fighting Gujarat already. Is this a fight we want to jump in on? You're allied with Garwal. Unfortunately, the only CB I have against them right now is Humiliate Rival, and that's not the best. You're only allied with me, that's not good. You're allied with me and Agagard. Me. Well, this is more than I've ever seen the Vikings actually banding together. Very often they're just trying to stab each other in the back and kill each other. Sorry, I'm going to keep on referring to these um, games that I had running. I really shouldn't. Uh, 2019, we're going to sit here. And we should be just within the supply limit. We are marvellous. Okay, cool. And then at this point, we're going to drop our army maintenance to actually make some cash. And we'll just hide in Fertibagaland if things go wrong. Right, rival of our rival. Shura's opinion of Mordgard at least 100. That is absolutely what I'm trying to do. Shura would be an amazing ally here. Which is kind of weird, because they were like my arch nemesis. I was constantly trying to find ways of not drawing a war against Shura. But now... And Sindas and Manas, they were the evil ones. Uh, evil, evil persons. Alright, cool. I can still build more forts. No, we're not doing that. I'm not spending the money. We're keeping the money. Money is good. We like the money. Um, so we are generating a lot of monarch points, so we should be able to get through the technologies pretty quickly. Uh, that likely means that we can add... You've claimed some of my land. Uh, send us. That's who we are claiming. Fabricate claim. Savonur. You've got an alliance with Shura. Son of a bitch. Aren't your rivals are sure? I oh, know it's Ratas and Gujarat that you're uh, an enemies with. Well, that's one downside. Improved relations are at fifty. Enemy of my enemy is um, countering the different religions, though. Ooh, yeah, minus fifty because of that bloody alliance with Sindas. You're claiming Goa, so I think Sindas might be coming for us. And you are allied with Gauda, Bars, and Kosala, so you're all getting a lot of allies. Yeah, lots of claims being made on me. <laughs> there were very frequently early wars against Mordgard. I just got a speed four. We're basically just letting time pass at the moment, waiting for the technologies to get up here. Now, we are Western tech, and everyone else here is uh, Indian, except for the other Vikings, obviously. I mean, we've taken the technologies with us. Um... Although, thanks to the institutions, that may not have that much of an impact. But what it does do is it means that we have the Western unit types. And I have no idea if they are better than the Indian ones. Alright, Mordred just died. No! Mordred! The disputed succession of Mordred is called a pretender to raise an army and march for the capital. No. Damn you. And we got a stab drop. And the 335 is now a ruling. That's fine. We do need to go up stability, like, straight away, which isn't nice. Oh, man, a religious unity makes that freaking expensive. Okay, we're getting that idea really late, then. All right, let's beef up our army maintenance, and also, we are definitely taking tier. For that discipline. Or, our king is really good at military. If we had that and the plus shock, then our... 
commanding ruler person, fighty person, has the potential to be really strong. How old is he? 28. It's going to be around a while. I don't think he can change deities. So was it shock and fort defense? Yeah, we don't use forts very often. Nah, going Thor is just... Just for the leaders, is it worth it for one shock? Or five discipline? Discipline reduces damage taken too. Actually, so does shock. You know what, we're taking... We don't need the national sailors modifier. The fort defense could be useful. We'll take it. And we'll also convert our commander into a... Yes! 2411. I'll take it. Four in shock is actually really good at this stage. I'll absolutely take that. Oh, we have another merchant available. Can we read? Yeah, we can read stuff. Um, I actually want the merchant here so we can collect the trade and we get more money. Marvellous. Because it gives you an extra 10% uh, trade efficiency, which is more cash. I mean, we're still paying a lot out because our army's raised, but that should be fine. And we'll get to Goa. They will take that land, unfortunately. And then it will take a little bit of time to get our morale back. Then we should be able to fight them. And then we can see how strong their troops are compared to us, actually. So that's a good thing. Alright, let's have a look. Halberd Infantry. Oh, they are Western. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Never mind. Whoops. Alright, tyrannical pause. It's done that a few times now. Very annoying. A representative of the people living in the area dominated by one of the most prominent families of the nobility has approached the throne today imploring the king to take action against what he claims are systematic abuses of power against the people there. As the ruler of Mordgard, Mordred II has a responsibility to his protect his people. Not doing so will make us appear weak and may harm the long-term growth of the province. The nobility would likely not take kindly to us chastising such a powerful member of their ranks, however. So we permanently lose a base tax or the nobility gets slightly miffed. Sorry, nobility. Get slightly miffed. Leader trait gained. We have become an inspirational leader, which means we recover army morale faster. Couldn't I have more, like, cavalry combat strength, or infantry combat strength, or something like that? And you're just going to sit there, you bastards. I thought I'd killed you. Now I have. I didn't want them to take the province, though. Alright, so we can reduce the maintenance now. Uh, to here. A request to share your maps of the Arabian Sea from Khata Bagaland. Yes. Ah. We can now see the coast. Marvellous. Alstavik, can we trade maps with you? Uh, steel maps. Where's trade maps? This is a interaction I've never ever done, ever, in my life. Trade maps, trade maps, trade maps. Dynastic, no. Covert. There's steel maps, but that's not what I'm doing. I want to actually trade them. Request to share maps. Here we go. They wouldn't do it because they're rivals. What well, about you? Uh, if we improved our relations with them, they would. Okay, so let's... Let's keep doing that. Build by a network in Sindas. We've already grabbed the one province that we could get, haven't we? Yeah, so we're going to stop doing that and we're going to start improving relations with you instead. Unless you'll do it already. Nope. You would accept an alliance, though. I mean, little nations have a lot of armies. Rival or arrival, plus 5 prestige, gain 25 diplo power. Awesome! What's the next mission? I can't believe I'm doing so many missions. I never do this. I would absolutely love to get diplomat uh, religious unity, but that's not going to happen for a while. Conquer Savanur. Where is Savanur? There. Are you still allied to Shura? You are. Damn it. Am I likely to get an alliance with you? Oh, if you didn't have that alliance with Sindas, then yes. Oh, I'm playing on hard. I had not meant to do that. Oh well. <laughs> Should make this more interesting. <laughs> um, hmm. That's going to cause problems getting allies, though. We absolutely need the Vikings to stay together now. I don't know who 
to ally with now. Oh, hang on, you're friendly. You're not very big. Who are your rivals with? Your rivals with Fratabagalant. No, that is unacceptable. You're also friendly. You two are not. You're not. You are? Kasala. Kasala's big. And your rivals with Ratas? You would accept an ally. Right, we are totally allying Kasala. Wow. Uh, sure, screw you. Kasala's good because they're close. Yes. Alright, cool. I'm feeling a lot more secure now. And on that note, we are going to end this episode. So, thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying the series so far, then please do hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, then do consider subscribing. It really does tremendously help out. This channel's still fairly young, like just over a year now, and growing pretty quickly, but we can always use more support, and it is really, really appreciated. So thank you very much. If you have any tips or advice for me, then let me know in the comments, and likewise, if you just want to, like, say anything about what's happening, give me some ideas, uh, if you want to ask questions about the layout and the map or whatever, then let me know, and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.